Hi, sir. Hi, everyone. Hey, hello, good hello. to see you, Rami. Good. Hey, Rami. <laughs> sir, I'm in London now, at last. Ah, good, good, good. Oh, yeah. Your move was good? Yes, sir. I, I moved here three weeks ago. So far, things are good. Yeah, new place and it's very chilly. <laughs> good, good. Good. So, eight degrees now. <clears throat> yes, sir. Heater is there. But still. <laughs> And glad to see you all, sir, and uh, some new people as well. Yes, yes. I don't know, Rami. Om. Hi, Jai Guru. Jai Guru. <laughs> Hi, Paul. Paul. Paul, yeah. John, can you open my video? Yes, let me see. I'm, I'm on my iPhone tonight. Okay. Here we go. Ask to start video. And it should start now. There you yeah. are. Hi, there you go. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hi. Hello, hi. hello. Hi. Hey, Trish. Hi, Romy. <laughs> We miss you, Rumi. He's not in. He's in. He's in England now. He's I, not I, know, England. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. Actually, we missed him when he was in transition. <laughs> in fact, I miss you all. Actually, session. <laughs> 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 hmm. So the time difference is a lot different in London, correct? Uh, now it is. Uh, uh, 12 a.m. past 18 minutes. 12 18. Mm. Yeah. So now instead of getting up early, you have to stay up later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, I, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit nearer to you, sir, now. Soon I will be with you. Oh, good, good. All right. We did get one question uh, from the uh, website, and it says, I'm convinced I'm not the body, name given to the body, or anything associated with the body. I doubt I have steady conviction, though, because when I check within, I'm not perfectly fearless, tension-free, happy, or peaceful. Is this where the Nam Mantra will help? If you are convinced you're not the body and the name given to the body or any association with the body, then who's asking the question? <laughs> I think, you know, when, because I know this comes straight from the book where Maharaj says, are, am I perfectly fearless? Am I perfectly tension free? But this is not an intellectual answer of yes or no, because again, that's using the body. Mind, ego, intellect came along with the body you're not body. So the answer to this question is your own self. If you sit there and say, am I perfectly fearless? There's nothing there. No fear, no tension. Because tension and fear came along with the body through mind, ego, intellect, and the understanding of what tension and fear is, but you're prior to being this. So you remain there. If you know you're not the body and you have nothing to do with the body and nothing to do with the name of the body, as you stated, then that's, that's it. Where's the question? Who's going to ask the question? And I know, again, this came from the book. And this is why Maharaj says, you are the answer to all questions. These questions from a body-based perspective are intellectual questions where you can say, oh, am I fearless? 
Am I tension free? Am I peaceful? Perfect, perfectly peaceful. Well, perfection is your own self free of any attributes. You could say the, the pure consciousness, but there's no need to say pure because consciousness is without attribute unless you're trying to put an attribute by identifying with an appearance within the consciousness. So am I perfectly fearless? I remain with my selfless self. Selfless self is that that observes presence because I have a body form available, I can sense this sense of presence. But we already had talked about, okay, I sense presence. It's everywhere, all over, in everything. So I pay attention just to that sense of presence. And then even that's released. Now you are prior to beingness where there is no question of peacefulness. Beingness being presence, being consciousness, being I am. Your focus is on presence and then attention is removed. And there you are. And now you know that the entire world appears on presence. So even if I ask myself, am I fearless? No fear, no not fear. There's an abs absence of any attributes that can be attributed through the words fear or not fear. What is fear? There's nothing. Am I tension free? Okay, first I can sit there and just, because in meditation, I sense that subtle sense of presence. So I sit here and I'm remaining just with presence, just die, just die. And then releasing the attention of that presence puts me prior to presence, prior to beingness. Formlessly using this body instrument but prior to anything having to do with it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And here, I, I, if I ask, am I fearless? There's no response. Am I tension free? There's no response. Who is here to respond? That's why Maharaj says go deeper and deeper and deeper within your own selfless self. And again, within is contemplating on body. You say, okay, outside this body and inside this body, but remove the body and inside and outside, they're a blur. Because the entire world is inside. It's simply the identification with something that you are not that causes you to have this concept of inside and outside. And yet you say in the question, I understand I'm not body. Well, if I'm not body, there's no inside or outside. If I'm not body, and I know I'm absolutely, I know I'm formless. I could identify just with the I am or just with the sense of presence and nothing to do with the world. Where's fear? Where's tension? And to whom is this tension going to be? The space in the room is not experiencing any tension. The sky, even in the roughest storm, the sky is not experiencing any tension, any disturbance of any kind. And as you said, you know you're not body. You know you're not the label of the body. 
there's just that one conceptual misunderstanding slightly of Maharaj has asked me to ask myself, am I perfectly fearless? Am I perfectly tension free? Am I perfectly peaceful? When, when there is no one there, you are. These questions that you ask yourself, even who am I? If I sit there and I'm very quiet and I say, who am I? And the answer comes, I'm formless presence or I'm Brahman or I'm Atman or I'm Paramatman or I'm master. This is only a conceptual intellectual understanding. You are the answer. And by you, your true nature, as you have dissolved all these different layers that are appearing or covering that that you are. So, who am I? That's the, you, the answer is your own self. And not intellectually. Mind, ego, intellect came along with the body. If I say, who am I? And I say, I'm Brahman. And that's why uh, Maharaj will say, I am Brahman. That's ego. It's a concept. I am formless. That's a concept. Because that you are That's the answer to every question. That uh, you are, can it say that I am that I am, or can it ask itself that who am I? Whoever is asking that is just mind, right? Yeah, well, who am I? Again, the answer is that you are. Because you could say, okay, in meditation, you feel a sense of presence. But we now, as much as we're meditating and remaining with our selfless self, we should be able to basically sort of fall into that presence at any given moment. But now you're, you're prior to this presence because, again, you're more subtle. You can witness this presence just like you're more subtle than sky or space. You can perceive these things. So presence is felt through the body form. The first time you know, I am, I exist. And now this that you are is prior to being this. Prior to being this, how are you? I, I don't know. There is something here that is seeing presence or, and seeing is the wrong word because you're not seeing through eyes. I, I don't know exactly how you're seeing this. It's like a, it's just a subtle, just I, just I. And you're prior to that. And that's how you know also that the birth of I am or I exist is the so-called lifespan. Okay, I know I exist. And then when I no longer know I exist, then it's called death. But I exist. No, just be no longer the knowing faculty of existence. That you are. Who am I? Is that basically like we talked about a black hole in, in which all concepts are just sucked in, sucked away. Like they're just prior to body, prior to world, prior to the sense of existence. You can't describe, it's, it's uh, an absence of any attribute. And yet, because this body is available, there's the ability to sense this sense of presence as an attribute or as a layer upon your own self, your spontaneous presence, then this entire world is there. Again, dream state is best way. You lay down at night, the body lays down, nothing. Then all of a sudden the sense of existence and boom, a dream world is projected. Mm. 
here the real is not is never problem right the real or whatever that i is never the problem the problem is the fake fake entity or that the mind which is posing as self suppose i think something i say that that thinking as me so now this is fake entity that thinking so now this thinking is the problem this is the one which causes the pain pleasure whatever that so okay. now how this fake entity realize that it is fake that Because fake entity can't realize anything that fake entity is one of the layers of illusion that just needs to be dissolved by using mantra for a time while you're believing yourself to be something other than you are but this appearance cannot do anything on its own or by itself it's it's not a separate autonomous entity okay you are saying this is insentient right this is who insentient it is it, it i mean you are saying it's it can't function autonomously yeah. the body is a lump of goo that the formless presence is animating but the formless presence is outside and inside and in all the bodies and in all the forms so there's no inside or outside for the formless presence and you identify with the formless presence rather than the body instrument that you appear to be using in the moment and it's just like a dream maharaj points to the dream because it's if you're inside your dream and you're dreaming that you're moving around or hiking on a mountain you are the mountain you are the hiker you're the water that is being drank by the hiker who's hiking up the mountain you are the sky you are the birds in the sky you are the beautiful view that the hiker is appearing to see because it's all coming from you and you know this when you wake up from the dream you say oh i had a dream i was a hiking on a nice mountain and seeing a beautiful view but it was not true none of it and as you know yourself in a real sense you understand that this entire worldly existence is absolutely not true because you are formless you are without attribute you are without nothing 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 so you say who am i and the answer is that like who yeah that one prior to presence that has no attributes and yet can consent is more subtle than this subtle sense of presence that can be felt using the body form and that's the answer to all questions if i sit there i say how was the world created ask myself the answers will come the answer is there is nothing Yeah, sir. I was having this doubt earlier. Now I think it's clarified. The doubt was, uh, if the selfless self or whatever that uh, the ultimate thing you are pointing, if that is the true, the I mean uh, the independent thing which is animating this body and mind, is it having any intent or cause? That was I was having the doubt. I think what I understood in this moment is. how an electricity you know goes to into particular color of the bulb and accordingly it glows and it goes to another place and it may turns it rotates the fan but this energy is not having any intent but based on the target it is going based on its nature and it, it is acting accordingly maybe in one place it is giving emitting particular color in other place you know it is acting as a mechanical force that means it's it's again you know it's depends on one's own nature or you know one's own conditioning but this okay but whoever is animating this or whatever that phenomenon is animating this conditioning but it is it doesn't have any intent or any cause cause is conditioning itself is the cause it and effect conditioning means the way a person acts or the way a person behaves or the how the way body functions so and that itself you know turns as cause and effect okay. 
Okay. That would only be within the illusion, though. Just like within a dream, you could say, and you can you can talk about in a dream. Oh, look, there's a robber over there, and there's also a couple who's proposing to one another, and there's another guy who's out on a boat boating, and they're all your own self. And there's no intent in your dream. You're just kind of the witness because you know that you're formlessly in a dream. You absolutely know there, there's this body is not involved in this dream world. Even the dream body that you may believe yourself to be is not actually yours. Oh. And yet when we go into the dream world and we try to explain these things, then there are different, but that's why you remain with your selfless self. You're the answer to all questions. No body, no world, no nothing, 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 nothing. And while you believe yourself to be separate, mantra will erase the illusory layers so that this nothing that you are, you know yourself in a real sense. Because if I identify with the sense of presence instead of with the body, right away, I've gone three steps removed from anything that this body is going through any of the body-based relations, all the body-based knowledge, because I identify, identify myself with the formless presence. And as I'm identifying myself with the formless presence, that subtle knowingness that, well, wait a minute, I'm sensing this presence. I am this perceiver of this subtle sense of presence. Presence is sort of the announcement that I exist. I exist whether it's being announced or not. Got it, got it. If I am feeling presence, means who is the one? Okay. Yes, and you're more subtle. And the only way you feel presence or the sense of existence is clicking with the body and you say, I. The body is the cup that you dip into the nectar of immortality. Oh, so that I, I am that. And now you remain, you know, where's these worldly problems? Because if you identify with presence and you know the entire world appears on the spontaneous presence, then everything is my own self and I'm totally removed. And the more that I'm the witness of this presence, then I am that that knows I am. And whether I am is or is not, I am. <laughs> what is time in the selfless self? It's always now, it's spontaneous presence. There is no time, it's timeless. The space between you and the things you're perceiving disappear. You become what you perceive. It's a miraculous thing. It's a marvelous thing, you know? Uh, and it's a good point of reference when you're in that, tr that, that trance, you're in, you're in pure silence. Everything around you becomes you. There's no space. And that's when time is gone, you know? When, uh, when you can see everything in this dream as you, uh, time is, it, it, that question disappears, no, you know? No time. No time. No, time. No. Time. Time, time requires a local identification. Yeah. When you yeah, have yeah. no local identification, then where's time and who's oh. to measure it? Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
to it, time to exist there should be some matter to to exist i mean there should be a body the, the idea of the body and its existence should should be operating that you know they are true i mean the body is true then only i'm that local identity is there then only the time exists does time exist without this entity no right what time and again you have to have a local identification to measure time think about dream even when you're inside the dream and maharaj has said this your dream only lasts about 30 seconds to 2 minutes scientific wise says this mm -hmm. and yet you may dream hours and hours and hours and that's only because of a local identification within the formless consciousness that you're measuring the time in reality the body that's outside of this in which this whole consciousness has appeared in this side of this dream is outside of that time completely because it's really in reality as you are sleeping two minutes within the dream from the local identification within the consciousness of the dream it's ours and now this body that's laying down sleeping in which there's two minutes in reality, the lifespan is the same for that you are. This appearance is appearing and disappears. There's no time. The birth of time is I exist. I exist as this, this marker in time and then this marker in time continues until it can no longer mark time and then there's no time mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. uh -huh, sir here i think one more thing to disappear at the time to disappear marker no need to stop but the identification with the local entity to be stopped that way also time can be stopped right well again there's there's only time with the local identification and when you know yourself in a real sense you're outside of time that's why we talk about all the time the scenes come and go just like here we are again if you look on a calendar you said okay here we were last week mm -hmm. and now here we are but there's no concept of a we're just here <laughs> we're, we're here and when this is over boop it goes away and post it, and then whatever happens is coming in a new scene. But there's no identification with anyone that's desiring to grasp and hold on to any sense of anything. Therefore, time is, is not. It's just Sir, scenes I, appearing and disappearing. Uh, scenes uh, appearing and disappearing. Uh, please go slow here. Are you saying in the death, time collapses? Similarly, the collapsing means here, the, the experience of time ceases in, in the physical death of the body. body. The experience of anything but, ceases. You, there's no experience, no experiencer. But that uh, can be uh, now without the collapse of bodies. Uh, uh, that's what I'm asking. Are you saying that it, is this uh, the realization or, or the false identification, you know, the going of false, complete eradication of the false identification, is it equivalent to the death? Dying. But see, there's no birth and death. When you're in the, when you are the witness of presence, and presence is the only thing, and you're not really witnessing, it's just here. And this entire world is on this. And there's no sense of anything that can die. If you ask yourself, was I born? The answer is your own self. Again, that black hole that sucks in all the concepts. No concept of birth or death. Who is born and who is dying? This is... And this is where we remain. Every doubt is a doubt about your formlessness. And so the answer is just your own self to remain. Again, you can identify with the... If you want to identify with anything at all, like Mahara says, space or sky identify with this subtle sense of presence 
oh, so that I, I am that. This is fine as, as like a next step, so to speak. You're eliminating body, mind, ego, intellect, world, because presence is formless. There's no need to think and there's no doubts. So now you just remain and then presence kind of collapse into that you are. Because that you are is, is, is without any attributes, nor does it, there's no absence of attributes. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. And so then these doubts don't come because I'm so far removed from a mind that can create a doubt that if a mind does create a doubt, it's like a friend who's way over there in the distance saying mm -hmm. something and I'm not, I, I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm here with my own self. Oh, what about when I die? Let me remain, oh, who's death? Okay, even this sense of presence. Presence can't die. How is presence born? How does presence use the body? Okay, I just remain with myself. Am I perfectly fearless? I don't know fear. I don't know what that is. Am I tension free? I don't know. What will happen when I die? I don't know death. Death is a concept that came along with the body and I'm prior to the presence because that's my main focus here. I don't know. Professor, earlier you were saying that now the present is filled with the content of body and mind and you are saying that assume yourself as sky as a beginning. This way helps to come out of filling, being filled with this content of mind and body. Then it, 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 when this is devoid of all these concepts, this presence goes to you are, you are saying. Then where is the death birth? <laughs> Sir, I am not giving any running commentary yet, by the way. Just, you know, trying to... No, understand. no, it's okay. It's okay, okay. Trying to understand. And it's, and it's not an intellectual understanding. It's a direct experience of your own self. And if for a time, you know, we've, we, we've all been doing the meditation, so we know this subtle sense of presence. Now, without conviction, that may appear to come and go, but I know that I am this sense of presence. I identify with this sense of presence. And on this sense of presence, mind, body, intellect, ego, world, all these things are. So, because like you said, if this body, if presence is removed from this body, it's a dead body. So world is gone. Where, where is world? Where is all these things? Without presence, nothing is. So, okay. This subtle sense of presence is my own self. And that's Nizagadatta Maharaj says, remain with the I am, just I am, just I, just I, I without anything, just glimpses of I. And that subtle sense of presence, okay, I identify with this. That gets rid of all of everything except presence. And now the more I identify with presence and I remain with presence, that also collapses. Is 
then there's no consciousness, no unconsciousness, no experience, no experiencer, nothing. Okay. Where can a question be formed? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And now, knowing myself in a real sense, I can go out into the world and do my job, do my duties, take care of all my responsibilities. Because what is there to it? There's no I, no you, no me, he, she, it, nothing. And I'm not even one with everything because there's no, there's nothing. Mm. And this is the background that can be found in any experience, anytime. Because everything's appearing on this spontaneous presence. I did notice uh, yesterday I was feeling uh, like not myself or whatever. Uh, and uh, I was less resistant to things getting in my way. Like, uh, you know, you, you walk through a room, you bump into a table or something, or your shirt gets caught on something. And it's like, slightly annoying or whatever but it, you know it was like a, none of that stuff could annoy me it was like just fine it's like it's just uh part of the part of the beauty actually <clears throat> things getting hooked on or in your way it was almost uh, almost pleasant pleasant almost mm. because there was no distance But that I can't say I, it happens all the time. But. And just remember, am, am I fearless? Am I tension free? Am I peaceful? If the answer is yes or no, that one who's answered just needs to be removed. Because you are the answer to every question. So when there is a say extreme pain uh it's i suppose it's possible to just see that as part of the whole scheme of things and not be as affected by it because it's just something that's going to be there for a while something well and again we talked about if you're chopping wood in your dream and you chop your arm and within the dream you may experience severe pain even upon waking up, you might, oh, okay, my arm is still there. But it's not the reality. I guess we're going to get cut off here, but... Your arm was never being chopped. And just like any pain that's happening to the body form, yes, there's going to be a sensation. Ah, this is hurting. But nothing's affecting you. Oh, yeah. 